Hey everyone, it's Bethany. Welcome back to day six of my Cricut Craft Gift Guide. I have really been enjoying watching your excitement over this series. Again, we're doing 15 days in a row of Cricut gifts that you can make, and I think that they are all turning out really, really fun, and I cannot wait for you guys to see the next nine days. There's so many fun things coming up. So in this particular tutorial, we are going to be creating personalized wine bottle labels. And this is a really fun idea because because wine is a really nice gift that you can gift to somebody, but to make it that much more special, I'm going to show you how you can create a personalized wine label just to make it a little bit more fun and special to the person who is receiving it. So we're going to be creating two different wine labels in two different ways today. The first one we're going to do is we are going to make print then cut printable vinyl um, wine labels. So we are going to be creating those with this printable vinyl from Cricut. I absolutely love this. I buy this in bulk whether I need it or not. In fact, I was at Michael's the other day and I grabbed a couple more packets of it and I was on Cricut.com today shopping and I grabbed a couple more packages of it because it's absolutely amazing to work with. I absolutely love it. So we are going to be using the printable vinyl Vinyl, and we're going to be using that for bottles that already have a wine label on them. You can also put the printable vinyl on a bare bottle as well, but this is a good idea if you wanted to cover up an existing label. So this particular bottle has a label on it that we're just going to cover up. And then I also have a bottle here that does not have a label on it. Now before you go asking me a million questions about how to remove labels from bottles, I will let you know that I have absolutely no idea because my husband actually makes his own wine and makes his own cider. So first of all, that makes me one of the luckiest wives in the world. But second of all, that means we have just some bare bottles it, um, that we can personalize ourselves, but I don't know how to actually remove them. We just purchased them this way. So you can go to our friendly Google to research how to remove wine labels if you want to do that, but um, I certainly don't know how to do that. Okay, so now what we're going to do is the printable vinyl will go on this to cover up the existing label, but I'm also going to show you another label that you can create just with regular glitter adhesive vinyl. So I wanted to give two options today because while I'm rotating my machines in and out for this gift guide, the printable vinyl can only be done on the Explorer machines and the Maker machines because they do print and cut and they have the print and cut feature, but you cannot do that on the Joy. You can, however, do a glitter vinyl on the Joy. So I just wanted to offer two different options today based on what you want to do. Plus, I wanted to do two different options because they're two completely different looks. Okay, so we have a couple bottles of wine, one with a label, one without. We have a weeding tool. We have a scraper tool. We also have some glitter. This is a silver glitter Cricut vinyl. I believe it's Cricut. This is actually my first time working with glitter adhesive vinyl, if you can believe that. So I also have some strong grip transfer tape because I heard that is what you use with the glitter adhesive vinyl. And then of course, again, I have the printable vinyl. So what we're going to do is we are going to get a measurement for our label. So what I wanna do on this first jar is, or this first bottle, um, is I want to get a measurement for how big the existing label is. So it looks like I have three and three quarters. So 3.75 by, let's say four, let's say 4.75. So 3.75 by 4.75. And then for this one, I just want to know how much length I have to work with. And it looks like I have about six inch. Uh, well, let's say let's say five and a half inches. Okay, so I'm gonna use all of those measurements in Cricut Design Space to get everything designed and I'll show you the two ways. It's gonna be really fun. Um, again, we're working with the Cricut Maker in case I didn't tell you that. And also, let's go ahead and do our little question of the day. So for our question of the day, go ahead and pop down into the comments while I'm crafting an answer. Do you craft for yourself or do you craft for others? Well, that's actually a very fitting question for this entire series because this series is about crafting for others others for making gifts. So I'd be interested to know though, um, normally do you tend to craft more for yourself or do you craft for other people? 
Okay, so let's go ahead, hop into Cricut Design Space. If you're really enjoying this gift guide, please be sure to give this a thumbs up. Also be sure to share this video because we are doing our best to inspire as many crafters as we can with how to create beautiful gifts for the upcoming season. And also remember that this gift guide can be used at any time of the year. You can personalize these for um, birthdays or for anniversaries. You do not just have to do this for Christmas. All right, everyone, let's get started. Okay, so we are in Cricut Design Space now, and we are going to first start with the printable vinyl label. So again, this is the label that would cover an existing label, or you could put it on a regular bottle as well that didn't have a label, but if you wanted to cover up a label, printable vinyl would be the best option. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over first to the Shapes button over here on the left-hand side. It's the second from the bottom. I'm going to click that and grab the square, and then I am going to bring it over and un lock it right here and then I am going to go ahead and make the width 3.75 and the height 4.75 and those are just the measurements that we grabbed from the actual bottle label that is already on the bottle okay so I'm going to make this white because my label is going to be white so just for visual purposes and what I'm going to do next is I am going to make this a scalloped um, little edge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to images and I'm just going to type in scalloped rectangle and we will see what comes up. So I'm going to scroll through here and I am going to select this right here. Now don't be thrown off by the butterfly. We're going to do something with that in a second. But I'm going to go ahead and insert that. Because you, what I'm focusing, focusing on is I only want to use the border here. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make this bigger. And then I am going to come over here and note that this has three different layers. So I am actually going to see which layer I want. So let me turn off the top layer. I definitely don't want that one with the butterfly. And then let's see, what does the bottom layer look like? Oh, okay. I think I want the middle layer. So I'm going to delete the layers that I'm not going to be using. And I'm left with this middle layer here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make this white. And then and what I'm going to do now is I am going to make this my actual label because this is beautiful but I thought it would be pretty to have a really nice little edge um, a little scalloped edge so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab my rectangle and I am going to send it to the front and then I'm going to make sure that my scalloped rectangle is going to be big enough so I'm just gonna make this I'm gonna unlock it and I'm just gonna make it a little bit bigger. And I wanna make sure, because again, this rectangle, let's make this rectangle pink. This is the existing label. Okay, so I wanna make sure that my new scalloped label is going to completely cover my existing label. So do you see how I'm just kind of giving it a little buffer around there to make sure that it is completely covering it. Okay, so if I put this scalp label over the pink, it would completely cover it. So I am sized perfectly now. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to take the pink and I'm just going to delete that because I have everything exactly how I want it according to size. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and use this pretty little wreath. I'm going to send this to the front. And I purchased this off Design Bundles. It's gorgeous. And I'm hoping to use it also in some future Christmas tutorials that I'm going to be doing. So please stay tuned for those. I have a really good idea for this. So I am going to be using this. I'll also link it in the description box below in case you want to just get um, one for yourself if you want to create some things for the holidays with it. It's just beautiful. Okay, so I'm going to put that right there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start adding some text. So I am going to grab the text box and it's right over here. It's just that T. And I'm going to come up to font and I'm going to search for the font Kate's ABC. And I'm going to add a monogram. So the family monogram is a C. So I'm going to only use one layer. And I'm going to make this black. So I'm going to come over here to the color up here and I'm going to make it black. And then I'm going to place it right in the middle of my C here. So that looks good then I'm going to come over to text one more time and I am going to search for the font I think it's called everyday 
fonts and it's called Big Day. So Everyday Fonts Big Day. I'm going to grab that and then I am going to say Merry Christmas. Oops. And then I'm going to do a space and say Clark Family. Okay, let me bring that up a little bit. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to alignment and I'm going to say center. That way it centers my text. And I am also going to come up to line space right here. And I am going to decrease my line spacing by just clicking the down button. And that is just having my space between the top line, the Merry Christmas, and the bottom line, Clark family. It's going to just decrease the space in between those. So I'm just going to make that... Oops, a little bit smaller and I like how that looks okay so now using this double arrow key I'm just going to reduce this in size and I'm gonna start sizing it for my label isn't this cute this is just a wonderful way for you to personalize whoops um, what is going on your label so it just makes it personal for the family you're giving it to. And you can make this for anything. So if you wanted to make it for a birthday, um, you could do that. If you were, um, you could put the person's name on there or the actual um, milestone birthday. If they're having a milestone birthday, you could do that. Um, but you can personalize this anyway. So feel free to take this idea and run with it. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I am going to select my wreath my monogram and my text, my Merry Christmas Clark family, and I am going to say align and I'm going to say center horizontally and that makes sure that it is center. Then I am going to select um, my entire label here and it looks center to me. I really like how this looks. So I'm going to select my entire label here and what I'm going to do is I am going to flatten it. Okay, so now it still has this little scalloped edge, but what you just really can't see it very well because now it has, by flattening it, it has taken this from a cut file to a print then cut file. So now this is ready to be printed out on my Cricut or on my printer and then it, then I'll put it in my Cricut maker to get cut out. So let me go ahead and change my canvas color so that you guys can see that it is still there you go. Now you can see that that is still um, scalloped around there. So again, I highlighted everything and then I just clicked flatten. And flatten, if you need a tutorial on flattening and what that does, it just takes a cut file from a cut file to a print and cut file, but I'll place a link in the top corner to give you a full tutorial on flattening and that feature. Okay, so this is going to be my print and cut project. You can see that over here, it's cut dash print, so that is ready to go. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over and I'm going to create my letters and there it's going to be a cut file for my other wine bottle and this is going to be out of my glitter adhesive vinyl so I'm going to go over to text and the font that I'm going to use is called storybook and it's called storybook tall and I thought this was really really cute for the holidays so I'm going to say be merry with an exclamation point. I thought that would be really cute. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do is, I had about five and a half inches that I wanted it to be at, so I'm just going to size this up to five and a half inches in length. So that looks about right. And then this is going to be cut out of adhesive vinyl. So I can go ahead and make this a gray or silver type color, so I know that I will be doing that on the glitter vinyl. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I am going to make sure my maker is selected. Again, for this label here, this can only be done on the Explore Machines and the Cricut Maker. It cannot be done on the Cricut Joy. You, they, however, can do this project on the Cricut Joy. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and select Make It. It has put on my first mat. It placed my label on a print then cut printable vinyl mat. Again, it's on print then cut over here. You'll see that. And then on my second mat, it's a cut mat. You'll see it right over here. And this is going to be my glitter adhesive vinyl. So I'm all set to go. I don't need to do anything else. I'm going to go ahead and click continue.
And the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to go ahead and place my printable vinyl into my printer so that my image prints on the printable vinyl. So I'm going to say send to printer. And then I do not need to add bleed for this particular project because it's white. Um, you can add bleed if you had it a certain color, but you do not need to add bleed on this particular one because it's not going to matter. Okay, so I'm going to be using my HP Office Jet Pro 9010 series, and I'm going to go ahead and load my printable vinyl into my printer and hit print. Once that's printed, I can go ahead and select the setting printable vinyl. It's under the vinyl settings. So you'll just go to browse all materials. You will scroll all the way down to vinyl. And then you will select printable vinyl right here. So I'm just selecting printable vinyl for my settings and then I'll select done. Now for my next mat, when I go to do my glitter vinyl, I will come back in and change my setting. So I will go ahead and change my setting. I'll go ahead and browse materials again. I will come all the way to vinyl again. And I will say glitter vinyl, which is the setting right here. So just remember, if you're working with different materials, to come back in and change the settings on each one. Okay, we're going to go ahead and load our printable vinyl onto our cutting mat, and we're going to get it cut out. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take the printable vinyl that just came off of my printer. You will see that it has a black box around it. You do not want to cut that off. You want to take this from your printer and place it on your mat, and you don't want to do anything in between. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in the upper left-hand left corner of my mat here, and then... I'm going to take my brayer tool and I'm going to make sure that it's really nice and flat on my mat. You also want to make sure that your Cricut machine is calibrated. I'll go ahead and place a link to a video up in the upper right hand corner that will teach you how to calibrate your machine. You always want to do your calibration right when you get your machine before you do a print and cut project. So I'm going to go ahead and then load my mat into my machine. Again, I'm on the printable vinyl setting. Okay, so the first thing it's going to do is it's going to scan the lines on the registration box and it's doing that so that it knows where the design is within the box. So you want to make sure that the box stays on your design and you don't cut it off because that is what the Cricut is going to use to determine where to make its cut. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and unload my mat because this first one is done cutting. And then I went ahead and put my glitter vinyl on a green mat and I am going to place that in my machine. Again, I'm going to go into design space and change my cut setting to glitter vinyl. Okay, so I am just trimming down my extra printable vinyl and then I'm going to go ahead and let this finish cutting and then we'll get both of them weeded and ready to place on the bottle. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just remove the surrounding area that is on my printable vinyl here. And this is just going to help me to remove my actual label when it comes time to place it on my bottle. So I'm just taking away that surrounding area. And then I'm going to also take my adhesive glitter vinyl, just really scrape down the back just to make sure everything is in its place. And then I'm going to start weeding it. So I'm going to just carefully start weeding. Okay, so I just finished weeding my glitter vinyl and it was a stinker. It took me a long time. It was really finicky. So let me know if that is normal. Again, this is my first time using glitter vinyl because I think this came in either a bundle or something, um, and I've just had this on hand. But let me know if that's normal for glitter vinyl to be really um, difficult to weed because it proved to be a stinker for me. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to bring our wine bottles in and we're going to get ready to place our little labels on them. Okay, so for this wine bottle, I'm just going to place a little bit of rubbing alcohol on the outside before I place my glitter vinyl just to make sure that there's no dust or fingerprints or oils on the, the glass. I don't need to do it for this because I'm just placing my label on top of a label. Now I should also mention that I only created a label for the, I'm gonna move this over. I only created a label for the front of this wine bottle. I left the back 
If you want to cover the back, just note that it's probably a different size and um, so you'll have to create something different. I like to leave the back just because it kind of gives an idea of what the line pairs with and it gives the uh, recipient just a little bit of information about the wine in case they are connoisseurs that like to know how to pair their wine with um, a certain meal. So that's always helpful. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I am going to, um, you'll note that I placed my little wine bottle here on just a little towel and it's just gonna help it to not move while I get this placed. So I'm going to take my printable vinyl here and I'm just gonna remove the cutting sheet that it was cut on. And then I'm going to place my label right over the original label. Okay, so once I kind of have it centered, I will just kind of let it fall right on there and it's right on top of that other label. And I'm just gonna start smoothing it out towards the sides there. And I'm just gonna use my fingers for this particular label. And I'm just gonna make sure that it lays right down. And it's covering that up really, really nicely. It looks really, really cute. Look how that turned out. That is so cute. This is my first time doing this, so the reaction is so real. I love how that turned out. It fits flawlessly over that label and it just looks so sweet. I love the scalloped edges too. I think it just adds just a little bit more. I think it's so cute. Okay, so that one is done. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave this to the side. And then what I'm gonna do next is place my other bottle right on my little towel here. And then I'm gonna get some of that strong grip transfer tape. I'm gonna cut a little piece off and get this ready to transfer onto the bottle. Okay, so I'm gonna just move this to the side move this to the side that is so cute i'm so excited about that okay so now i have a little piece of strong grip transfer tape and i am going to grab it off of this little sheet real quick and get it placed on my vinyl okay here we go okay so place it just like so grab my scraper and really scrape it down Okay, so this is a first for me with glitter vinyl. So far, it's been a stinker, but it's so pretty that I'm hoping that all of the chore of working with it is worth the reward. If you don't wanna work with glitter though, you can always just pick regular adhesive vinyl to work with. Okay, so now with it still placed face down, I'm just gonna remove the cutting sheet from the back. There we go. Okay, and then actually, since this is going to be placed sideways, I'm gonna move my bottle this way. And I'm just gonna place it as straight as I can on my bottle here. Okay, so then I'm just, I'm gonna go with my fingers first actually, and just kind of rub it down towards the edges. There we go. And then I'll reinforce it with my little squeegee tool. So I'm just gonna go through, make sure it's all really laid down. Okay, fingers crossed for the pulling up process here. Okay, so grab a little corner. Okay. Oh, that's actually peeling up really, really well. Okay, okay, glitter vinyl might be worth let me know, let me know if it, if the weeding is really actually an issue or if maybe I needed to do a different cut setting maybe. I'm not sure. That looks so pretty though. I'm glad, okay, I'm totally glad I did the glitter. Okay, I'm gonna zoom in so you guys can really get an appreciation for both of these labels. And I'm also going to keep this transfer tape now that I just made a mess of it because I can reuse this. So I'm gonna put this right back on my little sheet here and save this so I can use it again because that, it's definitely a strong grip. We've got a lot of stick left. 
Okay, here are the final labels. I love how they turned out. I think they are so polished. They look very, very pretty. And quite honestly, these would be very easy to do in bulk. So if you wanted to create these for your neighbors or for a bunch of friends, this would be super, super quick and easy to do if you wanted to do them in multiples. And I also really, really love how that glitter vinyl turned out on that. I think it's very festive. It just adds a little bit more. I originally was just gonna do white vinyl, but I'm so glad that I actually um, decided to do the glitter because that looks really, really pretty. So I love these. I think they turned out really, really pretty. Let me know what you guys think, but quite honestly, I think these are a winner. Okay, be sure you share this video to inspire others with how easy it is to create personalized wine labels. I think this is really fun, very quick, very simple. All right, I will see you guys tomorrow for day seven. I'm super, super looking forward to it. All right, give this video a thumbs up and be sure to answer the question of the day. See you later.